And joining us now on Locked on Auburn, John Ringer, Van Allen Plexico, the AU Wishbone duo, and also the authors of y'all's new book, Auburn Basketball, from Barkley to Bruce. And, and you guys have been talking and covering Auburn for a long time. And, and the interest in Auburn basketball, obviously, at, a, at an all-time high. So it sounds like you guys are striking while the iron's hot with this new book. What can folks expect when they pick this thing up? Well, I think what they can expect is every season of Auburn basketball from 1978 until the end of the NCAA tournament and the NBA draft this past year. Wow. Uh, in varying degrees of detail. Some years get about a page. Some years get 15 pages. John, does that seem about That's right? That's fair. Again, the, and the chap, the seasons that were great, that were and were memorable for various things. We go into detail about them, and we we chose this time period because we are connected to it. We were, yeah. you know, in school when Sonny Smith was there, and so we and we remember the seasons before we were in school. Uh, we didn't want to go back further than that, and then but we thought you're right about the strike of all the iron was hot piece, just because sure everybody loves Auburn basketball right now. And, and during the season last year, it was so fun and so memorable. We were like, if we're ever going to write a basketball book, now. now's the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Cause I mean, if you think about it, you, you, you not only need the enthusiasm of the potential audience, but you also need our own enthusiasm to do a project this big and this intense. And you know, I'm, I was like, if we're not excited about Auburn basketball now, when are we going to be, ex you know, excited about it? So let's do it. Yeah, that's yeah, right. And, and I think a lot of Auburn basketball fans, not all, but I, I think a good amount are, are newer to Auburn basketball. I mean, folks my age, right? It's like I wasn't able to watch Charles Barkley, you know, which is very, very sad, at least while he was at Auburn. But I think just informing folks and saying, hey, here's kind of a history lesson of what the program has looked like for the last few decades. The other part of that's important to me is like why I savor the how great we are so much because we have been in the wilderness for oh, a long yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, you know, I the measure of success for me is still make the tournament. Like any year we make the tournament, I'm delighted. I'm happy, and I I'll never be unhappy if we make the NCAA tournament. And I think that's coming from years and years of never having the chance to do that or never getting close. Well, y'all remember at, uh, towards the end of last season when it was tournament time and there was a real narrative where Auburn radio shows and, and message board chatter was, is the season a failure if you don't make it to the Sweet 16? It's like, are you joking? Like, are you serious right now? And, and I, I think, John, what you just said there kind of nails the fact of like folks that have been pulling for Auburn basketball for a long time, um, they, they do realize how special this run is right now. The other thing I think we really appreciate is, like you said, the history lesson piece. There's a lot of interesting coaches and players and characters along the way. Uh, and, and so we enjoyed getting into that, I think, a little bit. Sure. Yeah, I right. would say when 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 I tell when I told people the name was from Barkley to Bruce, you know, some people's reaction was, was there anything from Barkley to Bruce? <laughs> or is it like chapter, the first chapter, the last chapter, that's the whole book. I'm like, well, we remember you know, the stuff mm -hmm. in between because we lived it and we're fans and we're in the arena or the, or the Coliseum for a lot of it ourselves. But um, part of the fun for me, at least, of doing all the research for this book was finding and digging up even stuff that I didn't know or didn't remember uh, from in between those two much better remembered periods. Like, you know, the Sonny Smith stuff is great and the Bruce sure. stuff is great. But going in and digging up stuff about Cliff Ellis's teams that I'd forgotten or Tommy Joe Eagles' teams, you know, and then trying to see if the the Lebo and Barbie era was going to be more than three pages. You know, is there <laughs> stuff we can say? Um, one, one, one of the more memorable years for Auburn basketball for me when I was really getting into it was the Lebo year where we should have made the tournament, but we were the yeah. one seed in the NIT. Like, I loved that team. That's the team that made me really get into basketball with Tay Waller and Lucas Hargrave and Dwayne Reed and uh, Corvatney Barber. May he rest in peace. I mean, that, that was a mm -hmm. fun, fun basketball team. But all the other years uh, in that era, yeah, I, I totally agree with. <laughs> well, that's that's exactly it. Is I had kind of checked out a little bit there during the during the Lebo Barbie era, just yeah. because it's just kind of relentlessly disappointing, you know. And so it was fun to learn about some of the stuff that you're talking about right there, because I didn't know that team as well as you probably do. 
and going back and reading their daily, you know, the stuff from the newspapers about them was really interesting. And I, and, you know, we, we made sure that's all in there so that people do know about those teams. Right. All right. So you guys are, are coming. Y'all, y'all be on campus in the bookstore on campus this weekend from one to three Saturday from one to three doing a book signing. Give us uh, some of the details that I left out there. I mean, it's us uh, and the, uh... Our friend Jared, who did some illustrations for some other books, will be there with us. We're going to be in the University Bookstore in Haley Center on campus, one to three. We'll also be at the, you know, we'll be at the basketball game Friday night, and we'll be at the Texas A&M game, of course. And uh, it's, we think there's going to be obviously a ton of people on campus and a lot of enthusiasm with the, you know, the interim coach Cadillac uh, period taking off. And so I think this would be the perfect time to be doing this. And if you're out enjoying a beautiful fall day, swing by the bookstore and say hi. What are, uh, what's y'all, if y'all could each kind of share a story between, you know, not Barkley related and not Bruce Pearl related uh, in this book, uh, if you could kind of give us a tease. Well, let me say this. I, I, Barkley is a big part of this book, obviously. And again, part of the fun was gathering up the stories about him from high school, recruitment, Auburn, the, the Bobby Knight clash at the Olympic trials in 84 with Michael Jordan. So much stuff in there is just hilarious. And then the dream team, the NBA, I mean, Barkley has basically his own section yeah. in the huge opening section that also has the Sonny Smith material where we have a new interview with Sonny Smith. So that, that was a joy to do. Um, I guess for me, something that I didn't really know was about like, maybe that's not in that era would be like the, uh, I was re- well, I guess there's like the, the, the kind of poignant stuff is reading all the Tommy Joe Eagles tributes because, you know, he had left Auburn right before he passed away. And so it was it, it wasn't like our coach died. It was like one of our former coaches almost. And so it, it wasn't quite as big of an impact as if one of our coaches had just suddenly dropped dead on a basketball court, which would have been huge. And so going reading like all the newspaper things um, from his friends, his family back in that day, I was like blown away, man, this guy was so loved. Yeah. And it, and it kind of made me wish that he had never come to Auburn because he loved Louisiana and he'd had a lot of success there. And we kind of dragged him up to Auburn and he never, you know, he seemed like a failure and he mm. went back there and was on the cusp of reinventing himself as a Louisiana coach when he dropped dead. And I'm just like, God, there's between him and the hotel fire with Paul Lambert. I'm like, there's so much tragedy mixed in with this, with the triumph. It's really a, an emotional story. So that's interesting. Yeah. I, I, I'm not familiar with that story. So yeah, that, that'll be, um, that'll be oh, good. When I, when I, stuff. yeah, no, I need to pick up a copy for sure. John, do, do, do you have something from, um, from the book that's not from the Barkley or Pearl era, just because I think those are a little bit more well-documented. Sure. I think the late Sonny Smith era, he almost walked away. And not to go to another school, but just to go do something else other than coach basketball. And then he went on to coach basketball for another 15 years after that. So, Thank but goodness. really an interesting time. And he talked about that with us, and we did some research on it too. And I think that part will surprise people because people assume – when you're a successful coach like he was, that it's just confidence all the way through. And, and guys, the thing that really shocked me about that too, was that when, when he signed with, with VCU, he was almost in tears. He didn't want to go. Oh. He, he, he thought he was about to get fired in the, in, in an, in an association with the, with the Eric Ramsey thing. Mm-hmm because he thought that the basketball program was going to get thrown under the bus as part of the Ramsey investigation. And it didn't, but he thought it was going to. And his agent said, I can get you more money and a better deal at another school. And, and Sonny's like, well, if you can, okay. And, and the, the agent went, made the deal without Sonny in the building, and then came back and said, you're the new head coach of VCU. And Sonny's like, oh, okay. Wow. And he was so, it's, it's incredible. Yeah. And I guess, did he talk at all about his return to Auburn? Because, I mean, obviously he is beloved by Auburn fans. And he he loves his current job. He says he's got the best job in the world because he gets to sit courtside and watch the games. He's pretty good at it, too. Yes. Oh, yes. But I also, I think he conveys the fan experience watching that team, too. He Mm -hmm. grouses about the refs and all that kind of stuff like we would do. So he can really do that. 
he also said something to the effect of I, it, it's, he's interesting because he can be very, very outgoing and funny, but he's also going to be very melancholy and kind of introspective. And at one point he said something like he said, you know, he said the Auburn people all seem to have like embraced me almost like a mascot or something. And he said, I don't really understand it, but OK, you know, <laughs> he likes it, but he doesn't quite. I just I think he still to this day doesn't fully appreciate how Auburn people, when you do something for us, we love you forever. You know what I mean? And it's totally it's, it's a special thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. So for folks uh, watching or listening right now, guys that aren't able to come down this Saturday to, to get the book, um, what's the best way for them to order it? Oh, Amazon has it. It's on Amazon and it's on Kindle, too. So. If you want to get the paperback, uh, but it's also on Kindle, uh, there there was a hardcover. And if you're just dying to get like a signed hardcover, you have to become a patron. So go to auwishbone.com, auwishbone.com. And then you can like contact us and say, hey, I'm a patron. I'd like to get the special thing. But otherwise, if you just want to read it, there's the paperback, there's the Kindle. So, yeah. And in the, the Auburn University bookstore on campus, we'll have copies if you're just around campus and uh, okay. want to pick one up from there. Great. Awesome, guys. Well, hey, thank you so much for your time and uh, War Eagle to both of you. War Eagle. War Eagle.